Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Gather around with Uncle Trevor. Today we're going to talk about the Model Y and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Now, in case you haven't noticed, Tesla has started Model Y deliveries this past weekend, six months ahead of schedule too. You know, remember the Model Y wasn't originally scheduled to start deliveries until later this fall and here we are in March and they are already going out to customers. Now, I think this really shows that Tesla has learned a lot from the painful Model 3 ramp, but it's also due to the fact that they reused a lot of Model 3 tech, as much as 75%, according to Elon, in order to bring it to market a lot faster. I mean, what's not to love? We're all nuts about SUVs here in North America. Big ones, small ones, you know, whatever suits your fancy. And for many people, it fits their needs better. So they took a Model 3, stretched it a bit, so passengers have more legroom, make it a bit taller for more headroom, the seating position is higher with seats on risers, more cargo space with rear seats that split three ways, a third row for kids early next year in a seven seat variant, a powered lift gate, and the same great Model 3 handling and looks. But honestly, it's not that exciting from a tech perspective. Most of the really cool stuff I think is gonna show up in the Cybertruck. But wait, didn't Elon say they were gonna get rid of the 12 volt system? Nope, it's still there in the Model Y. What about reducing the wiring harness and the connectors to make it easier for robots to install? Well, until we do a review on the car and we poke around a bit, or maybe wait for Sandy Monroe to take one apart, we can only guess that didn't make the cut either. Remember, the more changes you make to something, the longer it takes to get to market. Model Y was fast-tracked. But there is something that's different in the Model Y that no other Tesla has ever had. A heat pump instead of a resistive heater. Up until now, all Teslas have had a resistive heater core to heat the cabin. It's 100% efficient. You pass energy into it, and the output is pure heat. But here's the thing. In the Model 3, the resistive heater is 7 kilowatt. That's 7,000 watts of energy being used from the battery, and that saps range. So what's a heat pump, and why should I care? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, a heat pump is just like an air conditioner. You gather heat from inside the car with a liquid refrigerant, condense it, and you run it through an evaporator outside the cabin where it turns into gas, removing most of the heat. You run it back inside the car where the fan blows air across fins and ta-da, you get cold air. So a heat pump works in reverse. You gather warm air outside the cabin and you bring it inside. And it's 300% more energy efficient than the resistive heater found in the Model 3. So what's the big deal? Heat pumps aren't anything new. The Nissan Leaf has used one for years. Why didn't Tesla use one for the Model 3? See, I get that question a lot. For Model 3, I think it was just a legacy they brought over to the car, combined with the originality of using a combined coolant system of the battery and the cabin together through the brilliant Super Bottle, which automatically shunts the coolant liquid as needed to either heat or cool the battery through waste heat scavenging. That is, running the fluid through the battery, the power electronics, drive motors, MCU, and FSD computers. It's an incredible engineering solution that uses a single fluid loop, unlike other EVs, which would require a minimum of two or even three more complicated systems to achieve the same thing, or worse, use a dedicated battery heater. Can you say less than 200 miles of range? But it doesn't take much reading online to quickly discover that heat pumps have a problem. See, once outside temperatures get below minus three Celsius or 30 Fahrenheit, they don't work well because there's just not enough ambient heat to gather to make it useful. And you might as well forget it at minus 20 C here in Canada or in the northern states. But since Tesla brought the new V3 supercharger system online, along comes a new feature in the cars, battery preconditioning. This clever feature they developed allows them to run the electric drivetrain motors in a less efficient or a lossy mode to generate extra heat for the battery before you reach a supercharger in order to get the cells up to optimum temperature for supercharging. And I want you to remember this important bit because we'll come back to it shortly. So I'm gonna let you in on the secret. Tesla applied for a heat pump patent in September of 2018. I'll link to it below in case you want to read it for yourself. So why would Tesla apply for a heat pump patent? I mean, what's so special about it? Like I explained above how a heat pump works, the problem comes in when the temperatures get low. It just doesn't work well. And it's not enough to heat the cabin in the dead of winter. But Tesla engineers are really clever, and I mean, really clever. Let me read you the most important paragraph I found in the patent that explains all of it. By having a compressor or a cabin blower that may operate in a lossy mode, there's that word again, heat is generated for the cabin by the compressor and or cabin blower without the need of inefficient high voltage cabin heaters, which reduces cost. Further, the compressor and or cabin blower may be operated across a range of efficient and inefficient operations based upon ambient temperature, battery system temperature, drivetrain component temperatures, and cabin temperature. As compared to prior heat pump systems, which were ineffective in very low ambient temperatures, the first embodiment supports more efficient heating of the cabin in very low ambient temperatures. You see what they did there? They're using the same trick they invented for battery preconditioning. 
generating extra heat by running the heat pump compressor and the HVAC blower in a less efficient manner to make up for the difference. They even hint at it in the owner's manual, quote, Model Y uses a heat pump to maximize efficiency. Therefore, your air conditioner, compressor, and external fan may run and make noise even when the outside temperature is cold and your vehicle is heating or supercharging. So there you have it, one of the big improvements in the Model Y over the Model 3 and the secret trick that Tesla is using to make the heat pump super efficient. And judging by Tesla's past history of innovations, this improvement will make its way into future cars and very likely into Model 3 in due time. If you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We have lots of cool videos coming soon and I wouldn't want you to miss out on any of them. So don't forget to click the notifications bell so you know when the video drops. And you know what? Let us know what you think of this innovation. Leave a comment down below. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.